Hello everybody, uh, my name's Grace and today I'm going to be doing a little tutorial on how to alternate skeins without getting a line up the side. It's called either a jogless join or helical knitting and I use this all the time. I've used this in this garment, this is the pavement sweater and if you can see I've alternated skein, I started alternating here and I alternated with two skeins all the way down the body um, and there's no line, there's no seam completely seamless and how I did that was I, um, I used a technique that I learned from a lady at EYF and you're basically slipping some stitches before you start the next round so I'm gonna just go straight in and show you with two separate colors I'm going to just be using two completely separate colors so you can see what I'm talking about um, but I would use this with um, uh, indie dyed yarn because it's very difficult to get um, exact same colors on uh, hand dyed yarn. I'd use this on big garment pieces on pretty much everything. I think I've used it on the last six garments I've used, I've worn. It's amazing. So let's get started. So I've just cast on 60 stitches and I just did a ribbing. I'm just going to do a little baby hat with this just as, a, as an example. But um, when you're, so I've started the ribbing and I've just done one round of plain knitting, if you can see there, it's just one round plain knit. Now you don't have to do anything to join in your yarn. You can literally start wherever you want to. So I'm gonna start right here. So I'm gonna get my new yarn. I just have it wound up into a cake. And it's good to have a bag where you can separate your yarn or just keep them. I like to pull from the outside of the cake because from the inside it can get tangled in yarn barfy and yeah, you don't need that. Well, I don't need that. So I'm just doing a magic loop because I don't have a smaller needle available at the moment. <laughs> and I'm just using some DK weight yarn on four millimeter needles. So you literally just add on. So I just add on by looping it over and I just knit and I leave that long tail I leave a couple of a couple of inches of a tail maybe 20 centimeters or 12 inches just so I can I will weave it in then afterwards so you're gonna get this little whole uh, little loose stitch while you're knitting it and then afterwards you can go back in and weave it in so I mean all you have to do is knit around all the way around to when I start again Okay, so I have knit all the way around and I'm just going to knit until I'm three stitches before this change. So I'm going to knit two more. Okay, so now I'm going to drop this. Drop the lighter yarn and I'm going to slip these three stitches. One, two, three, and there's that loose stitch that I was talking about. That is not going to be loose anymore because I'm going to tighten it up, pick up this yarn that I started with and I'm going to knit with that all the way around. So this, this loose stitch now will be woven in later on, but you know, I can, I can tighten it up right now. You could even weave it in right now if you want to, but it's not going to be a problem after this. So this is the where you started. This is the yarn you started with and you've gone all the way around and now you've gone back to the red. So I'm going to do a few rounds of these and you'll see that every time that we switch colors, the stitches, the, 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 the join where you change colors moves back three stitches. So you're actually going to get it's kind of like a, a helical, it's like a helical knitting. That's essentially what it is. It's amazing. So every time you start knitting, every time you change color, before the change, slip three stitches. So you drop your contrast color, slip three stitches left to knit, and then you pick up with your color and you keep going. So I'm going to show you a couple more rounds. I'll show you again in a couple more rounds what it looks like. So I've come around with the red again and I finished, I'm going to drop the red just before the last three stitches on the round. And you'll be able to tell this on a, um, 
on a, when the colors are very similar because you might overshoot and you might try and knit this very loose stitch. When you come to that, just stop and, and, and slip your stitches back onto your needles and just uh, knit those three stitches. Um, so I do I do slip them purlwise wise um, just to keep them in the same direction when you're knitting. Let me just show you that again. So if you come across them and you're knitting away, you're knitting away and you're whoop, that's a bit loose. You just pop them back onto your stitches. I do this pretty much every single time I come around when I'm knitting with two yarns that are pretty much the same color. I just want to make sure that they blend really nicely. Um, okay. So I slip them purlwise. So I slip them, I go in and I bring my right hand needle in front of the left hand needle and I just slip them off. And that just keeps the orientation right. So you're not twisting your stitches every round. Uh, three stitches, you'll have a little egg yuck going back. <laughs> That's a technical term, by the way. So then you pick up your, this yarn the white yarn, the one you finished, the one that is attached to your three slip stitches, and then you carry on. You carry on again. So here we are again. We're building our layers now, and you can see that it's starting to move back. So I've come to my last three stitches here. I'm going to drop my working yarn, slip three stitches purl wise and then pick up the new yarn and off we go again we just knit normally and you just kind of you get the hang of it every time it's basically you're doing stripes every single round you're changing color so it's basically creating a two stripe and I'm going to come back and show you what it looks like when it looks a bit more <laughs> like something <laughs> okay so this is a bit more like something now and I'm just at the um at the transition here again and you can see I've knit loads of these rows so imagine that these are both the same color you wouldn't be able to see um much of a difference but let me show you where I actually started where I joined in I joined in that gray yarn all the way back there so I'm halfway around the hat so every time you knit around, you're going back, every row you knit, you're going back three stitches on the transition round. So the transition is going to move back, but you will not be able to notice. Let me show you, this is what it looks like. So it would have changed there, it would have changed there. These are all slip stitches, but you cannot tell the difference. You really cannot. The way around it just looks like normal knitting the only way that you can see where we started was because these these yarns are two contrast colors you can see it started here at your helical knit that you you can actually see it starting now let me show you the back there is no seam there is no line you can't see like every stitch is actually knit. You are slipping those stitches, but you're knitting them on the next round. So you're not, you don't have any long, loose stitches. It is amazing. There is no seam. So we started over here and then every time we knit around, we move the stitches back. We slip three stitches back and then started knitting again with the, with the yarn on the other end. And that's it, you guys, it's really simple. It is really simple. So you just slip three stitches purlwise and start knitting again. That is the whole trick. The whole trick is dropping the stitches, dropping your working yarn three stitches before the color, before the new yarn pops in, um, slip those purlwise and then well, that's it. So let me show you on this sweater. So I have, uh, this is the pavement sweater. And so I've been alternating all the way from here. I started up here. You cannot see any seams anywhere, all the way around. This was just knit in the round on a circular needle. So this technique is for 
um, alternating your skeins really that's what I use it for mostly and I'll show you the inside there's you cannot tell where all of the transitions happen they're invisible completely invisible there is no line anywhere there is no seam there is no line where, where you connect them all it's amazing there's a few little snag stitches but that's fine <laughs> So I joined in, I can see here, this is where I joined in. Um, and I'm, I've fudged up this stitch, this is not anything to do with it. But I think I joined in actually here and then I wove in my stitches um, just there. That's the only join, really. And then I think I had another join somewhere down the end. So I think there's there's three skeins on this. Here, just over here. This is where I joined in another skein. And then, yeah. So three skeins total made this jumper. And I did helical um, knitting all the way up with the jogless join all the way up the sleeves as well. No problems with the sleeves. Amazing. So the only thing that um, I suppose people might be a little bit worried about would be the fact that you're knitting with two balls all the time. But I find that I don't get tangles because you're working with one yarn every round. You are not working with two yarns in your hands and they're not tangling around each other. Um, I find that I get the best effect at the end with the jumper or with a garment um, using this technique. There's no pulling, there's no seaming. It's not difficult. It's really quite manageable. The only thing is that you've got two, you're using two balls of yarn at the same time, which doesn't bother me. It tends to work. It works for me anyway. I hope it was useful for you. And uh, let me know in the comments if you've tried it and it works. I'd love to see. If you want to, you can hashtag jogless join and uh, I can see it on Instagram as well. Okay, bye.